what a warm day. It's right at freezing, 32 Fahrenheit right now. In southern Manitoba. At the beginning of February. Unseasonably warm. So I'm taking advantage of this warmth and no storms. Or at least no storms worth chasing to go do some ice fishing on Pelican Lake in Mount Manitoba. It's a pretty well-known lake. Good ice fishing. Uh, the only weather really going on is we do have a chance for severe weather tomorrow in southern Texas. Real deep south Texas. Marginal risk. Typical problems this time of year with moisture being able to create enough instability and so just a marginal risk down there but there is a two percent tornado risk down there in southern florida extreme southeast florida southern florida and then the next day wednesday again uh, a little further east and uh louisiana mississippi alabama another marginal risk day same problems lack of moisture and stuff so we're kind of in the uh slowest part of the year right now we're really just uh you know there's still a chance for some winter storms and stuff and it looks like maybe uh mid february there could be a couple of uh big storms maybe even some severe chases I've been watching the models maybe through like the heart of the country through the central plains into the northern plains but we'll have to see how that how that turns out but i will uh we get a good blizzard that comes through the northern plains i'm gonna go chase that blizzard and then of course i'm uh keeping my eye out for severe weather prop possibilities severe tornadoes and stuff so obviously that's what you see my videos that's what i've been focusing on lately is the tornadoes i'm really looking forward to peak tornado season it's just around the corner now we're uh into february couple of weeks in February. February is a short month, then we're in March, and if you remember last year, my first intercepts were March 5th. First big tornado intercept, March 5th in Winterset, Iowa. You know, big EF4 wedge tornado. You can see video of that. I just recently released a 360 time-lapse video, and that video, that, that tornado is one of those tornadoes. So, March can be uh, very active because then a couple of weeks later, last year in March, March 21st, in Central Texas, they intercepted the next big tornado, an EF3 tornado. So, happy Monday morning, Surrey Cat. So, severe weather season is just around the corner. I mean, we're essentially here in severe weather season because it's going to be, uh, and it's already been active. January was quite active in the southeast states. But I have been uh, still on a little bit of a hiatus break here, taking a break this winter, waiting for uh, good tornado chasing opportunities. Going, I plan to get uh, lots of 360 tornado footage this year, so that's my my key uh, target. My mi my main mission is that getting that 360 tornado footage, amazing tornado footage, tornado footage with the 360 camera. So eventually, I want to live stream with that 360 camera camera in the passenger seat, maybe one on the roof, and then the people watching the live stream will be able to control that camera and look around at the storm. But no storms to chase today. So, therefore, I'm going to go on this little ice fishing adventure here in southern Manitoba to Pelican Lake, which is about half an hour or so from where we live. Now, I went out to Pelican Lake uh, a few weeks ago, and that's when all my drill and auger woes started, had issues, blew up my drill, started, it just stopped working. I sent it off to uh, be repaired to the warranty repair. And then 
I bought a backup drill, which was a little weaker one, a little 18 volt drill. And that thing uh, almost caught on fire, started smoking, and black bits of plastic started shooting out of it. So then I went and returned it, got my money back, and bought a M18, uh, 18 volt fuel one, which is supposed to be a little more power. And cutting through ice like that drill bit so I'm not sure what's going on but uh, luckily I only had it for a few days so I uh, yeah hoping to catch some walleye at Pelican Lake yeah so a lot over the weekend I went back and returned the second drill hey Surrey cat EF3 member thank you Surrey welcome to the channel holy crap I don't have my harmonica with me for you I wasn't expecting to uh, pick up any new members today, so I, I I apologize for that. Next live stream that I have the harmonica, Surrey Cat, you be sure to let me know, and I will fire up the harmonica for your special little members only riff, unique just for you. So I appreciate the support, Surrey Cat, especially during these slow times. Oh, it's okay. I thought you were a member. I was surprised, but I don't care. It's like, I, I'm just glad you're here. So, thank you very much, Surrey Cat. So this weekend, I returned the drill and got my money back for that, and decided that I was just gonna get an actual ice fishing auger and not the pistol bit with the drill. Yeah, hold me to that the harmonica. I assume, right? You're gonna hold me to the harmonica riff. Definitely. That's that's. I love doing the unique harmonica. I'm checking. I keep looking down to see if I don't happen to have the harmonica in here, but I think it's in my bag. So, my chasing go bag. But I will get you a song. So I went to the store, returned the drill, got my money back. Three hundred eleven Canadian dollars. And. <clears throat> I used that money to buy a Strike Master 40 volt light ice fishing auger. So it's an all in one, it's an actual auger. It doesn't, it's not a drill. It's an auger power head that spins a little auger thing. A spindle with the with the drill bits, the, the blades in the bottom. You cut the ice, you cut a hole through the ice, so I've got it all charged up, got it in the bag, got the battery. Kaya's here. Semi, the wind. Kaya's here having a little snooze before we arrive at Pelican Lake in about, oh, uh, we're about 40 minutes away from Pelican Lake right now, so a little bit of a drive. I'll show you guys the countryside here while we're driving. Uh, I don't know why, oh, I have the camera, hold on, hold on a second. There we go. So it's, uh, as I was saying, it's like right around freezing, just above freezing, hovering around the freezing mark and stuff starting to melt. So it's a perfect day to do outdoor ice fishing. It's a little windy, but since it's so warm, it won't be too bad, I don't think. And we are headed to Pelican Lake. We're gonna turn east here in three kilometers and then drive 47 kilometers to the lake. We're going to drive right out on the lake. Pelican Lake's supposed to have good walleye fishing, so we'll see if we can catch some walleyes. We'll continue to talk about weather, look at the weather, upcoming forecasts, what to expect. I'm really looking, man, I'm, uh, I'm hungry for a good tornado chase and a good food, storm chaser food review video. So there's actually a little lodge here, but maybe I went last time I was on a Monday and they were closed, but there's supposed to be a little lodge here that has good food. And if they're open, I'm gonna do a storm chaser food review video at that, that lodge, that, uh, right on the lake there. But this is Southern Manitoba and we continue to have the nice weather. We had a few days of really cold weather there past few, uh, not yesterday, yesterday was nice and warm, we went on a hike up in the Turtle Mountains, it was a nice hike, 
we had gotten uh, an inch or two of snow up there. Uh, probably about two inches of snow had fallen overnight, so. You can see right now the snow's blowing across the road. So it's a little windy out there, but like I said, the temperatures are ridiculously warm. 30 degrees, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But when you're used to like negative 20 Fahrenheit and then you get a 50 degree Fahrenheit change like that to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, I mean, it's like spring or you could go out in shorts and a short sleeve shirt. It feels so warm to you. Your body gets so acclimated to that extreme bitter cold. Got a full tank of gas, just got a gas station breakfast sandwich and coffee. And we are on our way to Pelican Lake, Manitoba. It's supposed to be a good walleye fishing. As I was mentioned, I came out here once before and I was trying to fish it and I blew up my drill on the first hole, trying to open up someone's old hole. Didn't even really get to check the lake out. So I'm out here now for a redemption with the brand new auger. Let's see what kind of kind of damage we can do to the ice out there, how many holes we can cut. I only have one battery, so but we'll see. I might still try to get one while the setting, but wanted to make sure I was happy with the auger before I went all in. But it will be nice to have an actual ice fishing auger, I think, than just the drill. It's a little heavier, but it should cut the ice better, faster. And I don't have to worry about destroying my power tools, so. This is a decent amount of snow blowing across. Now we're going east here. You can see the southerly winds. We're kind of got a southwesterly wind right now, it looks like. Blowing the snow across the fields here and then onto this highway. Now on this, this side that we're driving on, since it's on the side the direction the wind's coming from, doesn't have as much snow piled up. It's collecting on this side. But then you can see it's melting on the road. So Especially in the high, sun gets higher later today in the sky be a lot warmer. That sun is uh, continuing to get closer. Days are getting longer. Creating that tornado. Supercell and tornado fuel soon. I mean, we're almost there, guys. We are almost around the bend to tornado storm chase season. And I can't. I couldn't be more excited. I've been mostly resting up, taking it easy this winter. Trying to cover, recover from a lot of years on the road, especially the pandemic years. The pandemic years were really hard physically and mentally on the road just because there was like no one out there and I was stuck in the States for like two weeks or more at a time. So not being able to see my family and stuff like that really sucked and was grinding my butt off through the pandemic so I needed a break so it was a good uh, good time now to take a break for hopefully a big 2023 tornado season tornadoes that are out in the open plains and the Great Plains again I don't, hopefully there's no tornadoes in the southeast give them a break it's been hammering there for years so I'd like to see some nice photo big photogenic, violent photogenic tornadoes in the open fields of the Great Plains this, this summer, this spring, so. And I want to get my 360 camera right up next to those things and my drone and stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we get some good ones in the, in the Plains this year. Plains have been a little lackluster. Too dry, not enough moisture making up in there mostly, it seems like, so. See how this year goes. But I will go to wherever the tornadoes are. I'm hoping we get some good uh, northern plains to upper Midwest open field action this year because it's nice and close to home. <laughs> well, it seems like the last couple of years there's been a lot of Minnesota, Wisconsin tornado chasing. So. 
Well, no tornadoes today. Today we are chasing walleyes through the ice. This is part of my post-pandemic slash five straight years of grinding on the road. Rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation is just taking it easy and ice fishing. <laughs> Doing a little bonsai tree work. Raising the amount of ice fish this year. Caught first fish, two years old. Caught his first fish all on his own. He was jigging it and reeling it. I had to help him get it through the hole, but he did uh, all the hard, all of the, the tough parts himself. But a beautiful day on the prairie. So warm. I don't even have the heat on right now, you guys. Kaya loves it. Look at it. She's out taking a nap. Last time we came out to Pelican, it was like negative 15 Fahrenheit or something like that. Negative 10 Fahrenheit, and she sat in the car the whole time. Maybe it wasn't that cold. It was pretty cold. It was around zero Fahrenheit, I guess. I mean, Kaya sat in the, the vehicle the whole time. There's an ice fishing derby that's going to happen here at Pelican Lake in March. So that's also I'm kind of scouting for that. I want to figure out where the, a good spot to fish is out here. And then uh, in March, come out to the ice fishing derby. Try and win that quad that's the uh, first prize. A, a quad uh, all-terrain vehicle. Be nice for pulling my shack and sled and ice fishing. What a beautiful day on the prairie, you guys. Holy cow. We are about, let's see, half an hour, 30 minutes from Pelican Lake. If you guys are just tuning in, we were talking a little bit about the upcoming weather situation this week. Uh, tomorrow there's a little bit of severe weather down in South Texas, Southeast Texas, along the coast. Marginal risk, uh, lacking instability and moisture. So, but there'll be some storms down there, I'm sure. And when you're down there, there's always uh, a lot of shear, it seems like. So there's a good possibility for a quick little spin up. Just give it a bop. Uh oh, it's fogging up in here. We gotta get some some defrost going. Yeah. So I don't know, you can, there's the auger I was talking about. You guys see it back there. I can't wait, I'm excited to use this auger. It should be pretty sweet. Strike Master 40 volt light lithium auger, so. Got some frozen minnows here. Got the dog. Got a half a cup of coffee now. Skip it a bop. Skip it That's what I do to Jet, my son. He gets so upset. I get his ear. I go, skip it a bop. Skip it a bop. Skip it a bop. Skip it a bop. Yeah, Jet wants to go fishing and uh, he learned a new word. He learned a new word this weekend. And, 
or just this morning. Well, he learned it in the last week or so, but didn't even try to teach it to him. But I was sitting there, turned on YouTube this morning when we woke up, got my cup of coffee. He's eating his breakfast muffin. I'm sitting on the couch, drinking my coffee, and turn on YouTube. And one of the thumbnails was a guy holding a pike. And he goes, he said pike. And he, then he said pike about a dozen times in this morning. So he was saying, he goes, this is, there's a pike. I see pike, 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 pike. Kept saying pike. So he knows the word pike now, like northern pike. He just picked that up on his own. <laughs> He's learning a lot, a lot of new words these days. So it seems like every day there's a new word. I taught him watch last week. But yeah, Pike, I didn't even try to teach him Pike. He just picked that one up on his own. And he wants to, he really wants to go fishing. He loves it. It's like his favorite thing now, I guess. I think he just likes the snacks and the TV and the ice shack. He likes going to the ice shack probably because he usually doesn't fish for too long. It's gets a little bored with it. How's everyone doing? Where is everyone at? Is anyone on here living in an area where they can go ice fishing? That's part of the reason why I've been starting to live stream the ice fishing. It's something I enjoy and even though it's not storms, I thought maybe it might interest some folks that have no idea what ice fishing is or don't live in an area where you can ice fish. I don't know. I just, I think it's kind of interesting. So. I'm in here now with my defrost now. Turn in north in seven and a half kilometers. Yeah, Surrey Cat, it is a great view. There's a little bit of lag there. I didn't get your comments until a little bit later. Until just now. San Antonio. No ice fishing in San Antonio. I used to live in Austin, Texas. Most ice I saw in Texas was one winter in January, on the reservoir, there was like an inch or two along the edges of the reservoir, strong enough to hold hold my weight. But that's the most ice I ever saw in Texas. Now, if you want to talk about barbecue. Sad. I'm a little sad right now. There's no hockey because of the All-Star break. So no Jets games until the 11th. Warm, 31 Fahrenheit right here. I've had Black's barbecue in Lockhart, Texas. That's the best barbecue is in Lockhart, Texas. That's where the best ones are at.
I used to really like a place called The Shack in Lubbock, but they went out of business. They might be open again now, but with a different owner or left here in three kilometers north. My GPS is taking me. We're at, I thought it was a little too far away. We are at Pelican Lake now, guys. It is right up here. Right down this bend right here. We'll be coming into Pelican Lake right here. Ninette. In Ninette, Manitoba. 70 kilometers an hour coming in here. We'll slow it down. There's the lake right out there, guys. Part of it. Coming into Ninette, Manitoba, y'all. Gonna do a little ice fishing on Pelican Lake. CMP up there, so I don't need to be going any faster than this exact speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour, which is approximately, oh, now we're down to 20 kilometers an hour now, guys. <laughs> I'm going 10 under the speed limit. The speed limit's 30 kilometers an hour, it says. Now we're going 25 kilometers an hour. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to turn it around here and give you guys a view here. We're coming into... Nine net. This is Nine Net, Manitoba. And we're going to the public dock or the public ramp boat launch, where you can drive out to all where all the shacks are at. A bunch of shacks out there. Just saw some snowmobilers. Hopefully the road's easy driving. Easy driving. Driving it slow. Okay. Wall car is about to enter Pelican Lake, you guys. It looks pretty rough out there. Like the snow's pretty deep. This way right there. But we made it no problem. Dang, I don't think I want to go that way. Snow's pretty deep out here, you guys. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, I gotta look at my map, figure out where we're gonna go out here. A lot of shacks there. Some guys fishing there. Oh, sorry guys. Grab the wrong. 
Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna back it up and take this other round, I think. Hopefully we don't get stuck out here, you guys. Someone might have to pull me out. Pull the old Subaru out. Snow is pretty deep right there. It's like hard. Yo, Kaya, get back in. Where are you going? We're not getting out here. Get back in, girl. Come on. Get. It's like it's just thick snow right here, but it's everywhere else it's been blown off. Okay, so where did my other phone go? Should I try and drive it through this? I'm afraid I'm gonna get the Subaru stuck, you guys. <laughs> Might have to just put it off to the side over here and then lock the rest. I might do that. I might just stab. Good thing I brought that little sled I've got. This isn't too bad right here, though, that I'm driving on. Hmm. Do I go left or do I go right or do I go straight? I can't just drive anywhere, I don't think, because the snow might be too deep, but I'm not certain of that. Like, what happens when I drive on this? Am I going to sink in? I could eventually sink in, I guess. See how hard the snow is out here.
Seems like it's packed down pretty hard, hard you guys. sinking in at all you guys it's pretty wind blown and packed down and there's been a lot of snowmobiles on it I think oh, might be sinking a little bit Trenches in the snow, perhaps. Yeah, how much am I sinking in that? It's not at all. It feels like I'm sinking in, but I'm really not.
That guy just took that path over there. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe I should have done that. Looks like a pretty good path. He's got a big truck, I know that. He just took the path. He's gonna follow his path, maybe. Our test driving through the sticker stuff here close to the road. I think that Subaru would be fine, but you never know. Right now, I can't see where the hell I'm backing up to. Digging myself in a little bit. Drill some holes and look down, see what it looks like. Give this new auger a shot.
Well, the new auger is badass. I guess I should have brought my little tripod.
Well, six and a half, 6.7 feet of water from the bottom of the transducer, bottom of the hole, three feet of ice. So it's like 10 foot depth normally. All right, I got a line down there, see what happens. Try and move the Subaru a little closer.
with some sausages on the ground. All right, I'm gonna try and bring you guys outside of the vehicle with my long extension cord. Plug you in when the battery gets low. There we are. You can see there's some like weeds on the bottom here. Here's the bottom. There's some like weeds. Here's my lure. You can see my lure move in there as I move it up and down. Well, we'll give the spot a try for a little bit, see if we see anything. If not, we can move around, maybe. It's hard for me to get around though on the, uh, the old Subaru, though it seems to be doing all right. It's got good tires on it, all wheel drive, so it's just the clearance that I'm mostly worried about. Point six feet from the bottom of the hole and the ice is about three feet thick so it's about 10, 10 foot deep here normally I'm gonna try and put you guys in this hold on Trying to get you, put you guys in this tripod holder. If I can figure it out, there we go. Never use it. Can't get it to unlock. Got you guys packed in the snow. That's a good shot. Hey, you're blocking the shot. Look out, girl. Blocking the shot. Okay, I'm gonna move this rod to this other hole. I can get the slush out of it, though. Forgot my scoop. That's all I gotta do by hand. Luckily, it's warm out. <sighs> uh. 
<sighs> Still cold. Urgh! All right. Well, I'm gonna move this route over to this other hole and do what's called dead sticking it. It's just a jigging Rapala, the little minnow head on it. And I'm gonna drop that down this hole over here. Right, she found more of those sausages over there. All right, we'll mostly just let that one sit there. And then in this hole, I'm gonna jig spoons. Start with this little buckshot. Let's see if I get him to bite on this. I'll bait it the same way with a little minnow head. Frozen minnow head. Salted. See like how I like my French fries. There's been a fish down there looking at it. A small one, maybe. Kai is wandering off. She smells something.
Oh, we got a looker down there. Got a looker down there, guys. Fish is looking down there. Probably a perch or a small pike. He's down there, right above the weeds. It's probably a little perch or a pike, a little pike, baby pike. I need to cut a third hole and put the camera down. What do you guys think? One good thing about live streaming ice fishing is I don't have to worry about the battery or the phone overheating <laughs> like I do when I'm live streaming storms, especially in the spring or summer on the Canadian prairie for that matter. All right, I got the little aqua view camera. Drop it down this third hole and get a look down there. Forgot the little mount I have for it. It's all in the shack. There's a walleye or something down there right now looking at my bait. It looked like a walleye, you guys. There's a walleye down there right now. Yeah, that was a walleye.
Well, that's a good sign, guys. Saw a walleye down there with the underwater cam. Yeah, so I stuck the camera down the hole, saw a walleye looking at my bait down there. It's so hard to see this darn camera. Got some weeds stuck on my lure. I can see, yeah, I can see that stuck under the water. 
through the camera. So I'm pretty excited I put the camera down there and saw that walleye down there. That's a good sign, guys. See if we can catch one now. Coax went into biting. Right, come on, Wally. Come on, fish. Look like a good eater size walleye down there too, maybe like a 18 incher or so. 
No more marks though since I saw him. Should I get some more cruising around here? Probably should have just brought my tent and set it up, but it's pretty nice out. It's nice being in the sun. move the Subaru a little more forward to give me a little more wind protection. Side girl, cold feet. You better stay outside in case you puke up that saucer green. Brought some power hookup for the phone live stream here. Oh. All right, let's do a little more fishing here. So,
pull you guys out for a little bit. Well, I'll leave you guys there. Uh, talking about the weather earlier on the way out here. So right now we're at Pelican Lake in Southern Manitoba and it is extremely warm here for this time of year. Right at or above freezing. And got a couple of holes cut here. Got the camera down there. Jigging for hopefully some walleye, maybe some perch. Got Kaya back here behind me, sniffing around, looking for sausages. But uh, as far as uh, storm chasing and the weather goes right now, it's a little slow right now. And and as I've mentioned in the past couple of weeks, I'm only chasing stuff that looks really good. That looks like it could definitely produce a tornado. And it definitely, uh, not definitely, but it needs to be preferably in like the, in the plains, out in the open where I can get good 360 video of it because that's my main mission this this year is to get excellent 360 footage but uh, there is a possibility for some severe weather this week down in south texas southeast texas along the coast and then mississippi alabama louisiana area on wednesday uh, that severe threat tomorrow in texas uh, and the, the, the severe threat on wednesday look both pretty marginal uh low chance for severe weather or tornadoes but there is still a threat down there, though so I'm definitely not going to be chasing that. It's a small area in the trees or along the coast, and yeah, it's just not worth it. But I'll be keeping my eye on stuff. I I'm looking at the models. It seems like I feel like we're going to get some big winter storms here in the middle of the month of February, central to northern plains. So I'll probably chase uh, that, especially if it's you know if it looks good. It's going to be a blizzard. I'll probably chase that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're right around the corner from severe weather season, tornado season in the plains. So, of course, you're getting severe, getting tornadoes possibly now this time of year in the southeast. But as we roll into March, we start getting more into traditional plains possibilities. So last year on March 5th, I intercepted EF4 wedge tornado in Wisconsin, winter set, or sorry, in Iowa, winter set Iowa. And then a couple of weeks later in Central Texas, near Taylor, Texas, I intercepted a big EF3 tornado. So March can be quite active, and we are just a few, three short weeks away from March. And, or less than three weeks, I guess. Short months, so. And then I will be probably, well, not probably, I will be taking a trip down to Texas in the first week of March. We're getting a new Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever like this one running away right here, back behind me. Sniffing for snacks. So I will be heading down to Texas to go pick up our new duck toller from the same breeder that I got that I got Kaya from. But today we are on Pelican Lake in southern Manitoba fishing for walleye and perch and pike. Preferably walleye. So I'll sit you guys back down here. Might be a fish down there right now looking at my lure so let's get you guys back in your snow home here take a look it's hard to see anything on the camera because of the being glare so but i did uh when i first put the camera down there a little bit ago did uh see a walleye sitting down there there's like a little clump of weeds down there to kind of like just cover a little bit of structure that they might hang around or hunt around. Do the mess around. Mess around. We do the mess around. Everybody do the mess around. Where'd my dog go? She's wandering off. Gonna, looking for more sausages that people toss out next to their shacks. Oh, we got one down there, guys. Got one down there. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah, we got a fish down there, guys. Looking. Come on, buddy, bite. Come on. Uh, couldn't see him on the camera because it was, the camera's too low. They're too high up. I think he's down there again. No, got that. Bouncing it off the bottom right now. Come on, fish. Oh, there's a fish down there. There's a pike down there looking at my bait.
Here. Big pike on the screen right there. See him? That's a pike right there. Uh, it's hard to see with the glare. <laughs> anyway, he was there. There's a big pike down there looking at my lures. Lost my minnow head. Got one down there looking at my lure right now. He left. Maybe been that same pike. Let's see if we can catch him. Maybe I had a bite there. Or it was just stuck on the ice. I think it was just stuck on the ice.
So that pike ended up leaving. No, couldn't trigger a bite. I need to get my gloves. My thin gloves. It's kind of chilly when you're out here for a while. Uh, it might need a break too. Line feels twisted up. Yeah. Well, I got the camera pointed at the dead stick, and we got the flasher on this jigging spoon hole. Well, I've seen a walleye and a pike down there, so that's a good sign. No bites, though, so hope to change that here shortly. <laughs>
Uh, I lost track of Kaya. Just gonna try and point you guys up a little more. I think I pointed you guys up too far. Oh, there's Kaya. Well, at least we're seeing fish, guys. We're not catching them, but we're seeing them. That's the first step, is being able to find them where they're at. Now we just gotta try and catch them, figure out where they wanna bite. I don't really care about the pike. I want walleye anyway, so.
Just watch Kaya slip and fall on her face. Might be time for a little warm-up session in the car. <sighs> Get Kaya in there too. It's warm out today, but it's blowing decent, so. Get out of the wind for a little bit.
I think I'm gonna cut some other holes, guys. Cut a couple of this direction in a ways. Maybe a couple this way, a couple this way. Check out the area around this area. See if I can find anything.
<coughs> helicopter there. Military helicopter. All right, we're gonna go try check out these two holes I caught cut down here. Right, let's go check out these two holes. You're just tuning in, we're here. Oh, that's bright. Out of breath. Here in southern Manitoba. Pelican Lake. Doing some ice fishing, just cut some holes here. Saw a couple fish down there in the camera, but no bites. It's a beautiful day on the prairie today. It's like right at freezing, a little windy, but boy, is it sure is warm for this time of year, which is why we're able to fish outside. Oh, like your holes are freezing up. So, in the camera I saw a pike, and it looked like a walleye, but it could be either of the pike. Yeah, I think there are a couple of other marks down there. Oh, I passed the holes. Got my scoop, so we're having to do it by hand here today. Like a dog. Reverse as much as I could with the auger. Some, find some fish and I'll go get the auger and drill a couple more holes and bring the camera and or set the camera up. Set a second rod up. But we'll fish this hole for a couple minutes, five minutes or so. See if we can find anything and if not, we'll move to the next hole. It's like another. 75 yards that way. Let's see if we can find some walleyes around here. Out on Pelican Lake in beautiful, sunny Manitoba. <laughs> Feels like 
April. Got some cloud cover coming over now. Might get the fish active a little more. Pretty good patch of clouds, we'll see. This might get uh, maybe our window here now. I have to go get my water in my other hat. I'll be right back. Oh, kick some snow in there. I went ahead and just brought the auger too. Catch my breath for a minute and then we'll go try that other hole. And if nothing there, we'll go, we'll move on and dig another one, or cut another one. That's why I brought the auger. We're gonna go on a little walleye hunt here.
Oh. Mistake, forgot my scoop. I got my bait on there. There's fish down there, guys. I'm gonna fix my lure here. Oh, that's good. I got. It. Yeah, we got fish down there. Lost my cloud cover. perch they're down there looking at it right there. not wanting to bite though got a small lure on there too
try that digging repeller. I cut another hole and see what's down there. Yeah, let's get the camera down.
can see Kaya now. There we go. Little walleye. Tiny little walleye. Open your mouth, buddy. There you go. Little baby walleye. Like six inches. Well, we're on a spot, though. Let's see if there's some bigger ones down there. Okay, they seem to like the little jigging wrap. Jigging shad. Let's see if we can catch another one. Bigger. I thought he was small. I thought it was a perch because there was hardly any mark. I forgot to put my tackle bag in the sled with my pliers in it.
Might have been the only fish around this hole. Might have to move again. <laughs> Not marking any new ones.
Yeah, it's a little deeper this way. No, it's not. <laughs> Thought it was a little deeper here for a second by a foot. I was like, wow, that's a big drop off. Pretty flat and featureless, so I'm just looking for some fish hanging out. There's like these clumps of weeds down there, and just looking for. Oh, my line on my jigging jigging rod got snagged off, and I lost my lure. All right then. Good thing it wasn't the one I wanted to use. And we're close to the vehicle, so I can get a tackle bag now too. Just past the vehicle, it's back that way. Had a, had, had a bite down there. Look like another little one. Just looking at Kaya to see where the heck she was at when paying attention. I'm gonna bring my jig up, make sure I still got a minnow on there. No, lost my bait. All right, well, we got fish down here. Let's see if we can catch them this time. Turning my sensitivity down a little bit. My lures throwing a big mark. Oh, we got fish down there. Swung the. Yeah.
fish stole my bait. Now it's done. Got its meal. Stupid dog still way the heck down there. Might be time to move again. I'm gonna go grab my tackle back from the car that's like a hundred feet this way. Oh. Damn, I busted my whole everything off of this line. My swivel and everything. Swivel and leader. Shit. Oh, I'm gonna have to rig this one back up real quick. I think I need another. I gotta go back to the car then. Crap. I'm gonna go retrace my steps to see if I can find that lure.
found it. There's my swivel. Tie this back on. Cut this excess off after I get this tied on. My dog is still off running around down there somewhere. Gonna cut this old old tie off. There we are. All right, I think it's time to move to a new spot. Actually put it up this time, eh? Yeah, one bite right out of the gate and then nothing. All right.
Just looking at Kaya, trying to figure out what the heck she's doing over there. Make sure she's all right. I think she's just sniffing around. Lion got into the hook loop. I don't know how, but it did. There we go. I haven't marked anything yet in this new hole.
so I'll bounce it off the bottom, see if we can bring anything in. I gotta rest my knees a little bit, Stan. I have to go track down that dog over there. She's in a world of her own over there. She's deaf.
No marks in this hole, I'm moving on. Fish can pull a rod down the hole. Kaya's coming this way. shacks over there that direction
pretty hungry. Got you guys mount mounted to my fish finder now.
just go back to my original spot. See if I can find any hidden snacks in the sewer. <laughs> Bounce around to those other holes I drilled near it. Where I caught the one. See if I can, maybe when any new ones are around. It's probably what I'll do next. Fish this for a couple more minutes, but. But no, why didn't I mark it? Or I did, it was just tiny. Another tiny little uh, walleye, probably. Still got my bait. Just a tiny little bite. Yeah, he was a mark, but it was tiny. Bigger than the lure itself.
Alright, I'm gonna go back to my original walls. I need to sit down in the car for a little bit anyway, rest my knees. Ugh.
much water, girl. I think there's some fish down there. I'm gonna drop this down real quick, but I'm probably gonna change it out. See if I can find some snacks in the back seat.
Well, I got some cold coffee left. Fish down there right now. Maybe not. Thought there was. It's just that weed line. Going to swap out this lure for something else. was a little buckshot spoon. Put this dinner bell on there. Give this a shot. Maybe go down to that hole that I caught the little walleye on earlier. Did I take the barbs off this one? Yeah. Kaya's sleeping in the car now. He's had enough. I'm gonna go take my rod to the oh, a lot of people coming out here now. 
to the hole. I caught the fish in earlier. Let's see if there's anything in there.
No marks in those holes. And I lost my minnow head like right out of the gate. But it didn't matter anyway, I didn't mark anything. Some guy got his truck stuck over there and he had to dig himself out. These gloves are a pain with these hooks, I tell you what. And they're not even barbless, or they're not even barbed hooks. They're barbless. Kaya's still sleeping in the car. She's had a long day of scrapping around in the snow for leftover snacks. I still have a pile of sausage on top of the vehicle that I threw down. Oh shit, there's someone driving here. Right there. Uh. No. Fish is are running out of juice. There we got one. Maybe no. <sighs> Popped off. <sighs> or I was just hooked onto the darn hummingbird line. Felt like a fish. I think there was a fish on there. It got wrapped up in the hummingbird line, maybe. <sighs> or I just need to go eat. I haven't eaten since that crappy gas station breakfast sandwich. Well, my extra battery is unfortunately in the fish shack too fully charged, but I left it in there because I didn't think I would be going here when I left it there.
Well, the stream got disconnected for a while and I didn't realize it. And I think uh, you guys missed a, caught a walleye, a little, another little like seven inch or small little walleye. I just had to go in the car and warm my hands up and get my other gloves because my hands are freezing. They're wet. My other gloves are wet. But yeah, another little walleye I caught. That sucks, the stream was disconnected. <laughs> The hummingbird flasher is about to die. Pretty sure the Baxter battery is not in the back of the Subaru. I'm gonna check. Forgot my bucket. Yeah, I didn't see the battery. It's all right, I'm not gonna stay out here that much longer anyway. Catch a couple of eater size walleye though, not those little dinky ones. <laughs> Maybe get a flurry of luck here at the very end of the day. blue sky and now no clouds at all in sight we had that one brief moment where we got that cloud cover it was nice but 
right after that when I caught that first little walleye. And then caught another one here in this hole about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. I thought I had some weeds on there.
Well, so far only two walleye here on Pelican Lake in Manitoba. Good thing we're not relying on the fishing for food tonight. You can almost just lift it out and pull a fish in. Don't you need the reel? <laughs> Shallow. Well, the hummingbird finally died, so we don't have that anymore. But anyway, the last one I caught on this jigging rod here, and I didn't have a, the flasher in there, so caught it the old-fashioned way. But the battery is dead now. Didn't start with a full charge, I forgot to charge it up. And my extra battery is in the ice shack, so. I was actually surprised it lasted as long as it did. <laughs> At least I know what my bottom looks like. You gotta come up a little bit because there's a weed. I think the clump of weeds is underneath this hole on the right here on my right hand. Jigging right above the clump of weeds so it's kind of like a little bit of structure under there on an otherwise flat bottom. Flat featureless bottom. Water's pretty clear though. You can see real well. Probably could see the bottom looking through it. No, I can't. Not that shallow. <laughs> it's like 10 feet of water, but three feet of ice. Let's see what time it is here. Probably leave here soon. Stop for some snacks at the little convenience store. Probably give it 15 more minutes and then I'll head out.
last, that's how deep it is right there. Just hit bottom. I'm gonna go try these other holes down here again.
Well, I hooked onto a decent one over there, but I lost him when my lure snagged on the bottom of the hole, bringing him up, and it popped the, popped the lure out of his mouth. Felt like an eater one, too, unfortunately. For me, not for him.
Yeah. I'm gonna go try that far hole one more time. Take both rods. Try it. Again.
a lot. About ready to head out, starving. Yeah, looks like he's going the exact same spot that that other guy was at earlier. Alright guys, I'm gonna get going. It's probably just about to get good, but I think kids will be home soon. Caius next to the back seat here.
All right, we gotta try and get out of here, and I gotta get snacks and get home. I think there's a good spot right up here. I can do a three-point turn right here. We gotta go find the little convenience store now up here.
All right, guys, that was Storm Chaser Ice Fishing Adventure at Pelican Lake. Manitoba, I got some popcorn twists here now. But the final tally of the uh, it's not that guy, I can't see it. of the ice fishing adventure was two walleye that oh, he's trying. two walleye that together were even long enough to be an eater sized walleye. Like one was like six inches and the other one was like seven inches little baby walleyes. But I had a good one on there at the end, at the far hole away from the, the live stream. That probably goes probably an eater size and I was, I was bringing it into the hole. My lure caught on the side of the bottom of the hole. It pulled the lure out of his mouth. So. so that was Pelican Lake. Manitoba and Ninet, Manitoba. So. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Glad you guys tuned in. Car Car, Heidi T, Surrey Cat, Jason of Michigan. Many others that I missed. I'm going to head home and make some dinner. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.